Iceland is the very definition of post-apocalyptic. Sandstorms strip the paint off your car one second and the next you can be buried in snow. They have a saying here, if you don't like the weather, then wait five minutes. Which they also say in Wales, but here it just seems that little bit scarier. OK, so we're in a country that's famed more for its herring than its generous road network, but that's exactly what we were looking for, somewhere that feels like you're driving on a different planet. Because if the world were to end tomorrow, then two things would survive. One, cockroaches. And two, those, Land Rover Defenders. They're simple, rugged and pretty much indestructible. The family jeans are strong. The design isn't that different to the Series 1 that came out in 1948. Nearly 60 years on, this latest version stands there and says the same thing. Try and break me. And so we will. To help reach the parts other 4x4s come... mean I was good at American football or rapping. Here, I'm hoping they're a passport to a big piece of ice. Take me to the glacier. I have a theory. With a defender, you can literally stick a pin in a map and then drive there. It doesn't matter what's between you and your destination. If you're in one of these, it'll get you there. Now, the only way to work out that this is an 07 rather than an 87 is the fact that it's got a bit of a bonnet bulge to accommodate a new engine. 120 horsepower, four-cylinder diesel, out of, wait for it, a transit van. And this engine has actually been specially tuned to deal with really shoddy fuel, which gives you the impression that this car isn't designed for the M1. It's designed for lifeboatmen in Latvia. By far the biggest changes of ever are in here. We've got a completely new redesigned dash, nicking bits from the new Freelander like these dials here and, uh, and these heat events over here. It's still a bit, uh, what's the word? Um, it's still a bit rustic really. Mind you, we've got all the heater controls now centralised rather than spattered randomly across the cabin. And apparently, this new heating system heats the car 40% quicker and gets it 12 degrees hotter, which means that we should survive a cold snap in England. Oh, and it's even got an MP3 player socket, which means that Land Rover has genuinely entered the 21st century. Ish. It does not 60 in about 16 seconds, which is slow. Only does about 82 and a half miles an hour, which is slow. And it does about 28 miles to the gallon, which is all right. So you're never going to win a round of top trumps. But a Defender isn't designed to impress on paper. It impresses you where the pebbles are as big as dinosaur eggs, in the middle of an uncharted mountain. On Mount Doom, your only friend is a low-ratio gearbox. Oh, this is a big hill. I'm not sure I should be going down here. Ooh, 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 my word. OK, we're just pointing at the floor. We're just pointing at the floor. Oh, my gosh, I'm hanging out the seatbelt. Ooh! But it still does it. It just keeps on going. That's incredible. This is what 4x4s four should be absolutely fit for purpose. This goes off-road like no other car I've ever driven. You would not get a normal SUV up here. You wouldn't get it halfway up here because it'd be destroyed. Whatever we threw at it, the Defender took it all in its 38-inch stride. It makes you want to have an adventure. It encourages you to go places you wouldn't normally. I've started feeling like a Happy Shopper version of Ray Mears. Oh my word. 
I think we've made it. Look, it's a glacier. That is unbelievable. Prices start at around 19 grand for what Land Rover call their toughest vehicle. What that really means is that they put competence before comfort. The cabin's cramped, it's too noisy and frankly it's still uncomfortable. On the road, it would be rubbish. But where there are no roads, you wouldn't want to drive anything else. <laughs>